Friends, welcome back to our channel Learn with Geeks. In this video, I will discuss with you 10 Power BI interview questions which were recently asked at Capgemini, okay, which is a MNC you all know. So these questions were provided to me by one of the subscribers of this channel. So thought of creating a video on this so that you all also get to know about the questions asked. So let's start the video and before that, if you're new to the channel, then do subscribe it and hit the bell icon to stay updated with all the coming useful videos because the content like this, you will not find anywhere else on YouTube. At the same time, you can also follow me on Instagram that is learned with gigs where you will find job related regular updates as well as short videos on data analytics domain. And also friends do hit the like button of this video because it is completely free for you and your one like will give me the motivation to create more videos like this. And one more thing I would like to recommend over here since many of you ask me where to learn Power BI, Excel, SQL and Python which is relevant as per the data analyst roles and from where basically you can practice the real time projects. So for that I would recommend you to go for Code Basics Data Analyst Bootcamp 2.0. Let me tell you what I'm talking about on the screen. So this is the bootcamp that I was talking about. Whenever we go for a paid course or a paid bootcamp, we have two criteria. First is the quality of the content and the second one is affordability. In both these areas, this bootcamp is brilliant. You will get this data analytics bootcamp 2.0 for Rs. 6,300 only. And at the same time, the quality is very good. If I talk about the skills that you will be learning in this bootcamp journey is first you will start with Excel, then Power BI, then SQL, then Python. And parallelly, you will be taught about online credibility, how online presence is important nowadays in the market. They will guide you in resume preparation. They will provide strategies to apply for the jobs in different companies. They will help in interview preparation and they will also provide a virtual internship which, which you can include in your resume too. At the end, after four months of hard work, you will be job ready in the market. So this is a brilliant bootcamp to go for, for a very affordable price. I will provide the link of this bootcamp in the description box of this video. Please do check it out. So you can clearly see here these questions were asked in Capgemini on 1st of Feb. Okay, so recently it was asked one week back. So the first question is, can we use username and user principal name in static RLS that is row level security. So to answer this question, you should already know about static row level security and dynamic row level security. You need to understand that username and user principal name. Both of these DAX functions are responsible for returning the credential of the logged in user. So if it is related to credential, that means it is something related to dynamic row level security right so that means it is not used in the static row level security but you have to answer like the way i have informed you here the answer okay i hope it is clear to you now the next question is does power bi maintain or store historical data so by default power bi doesn't store any historical data but we can definitely do predictive analysis using power bi but for that we need to have the historical data answer will be no it does not maintain or store historical data now moving on to the third question is it possible to create drill down drilled up on three fact tables uh, for this question you need to understand that see in general fact tables are not interconnected to each other fact tables is basically the tables with which we have in which we have transactional data okay so usually in all the real time projects we have individual fact tables which are not interlinked to each other okay so if it is not interlinked to each other it is not possible to create a drill down or drill up on those fact tables so in this way you can answer this particular question now the next question is that is fourth one if there are constant applied on the table does primary key and foreign key will have effect in power bi so basically if any kind of constant is applied on any table so does it have any effect so how to answer this question so basically when we load tables in power bi so we we create a model on top of it right we identify the primary keys, we identify the foreign key between two table and then we create a one to many relationship. If the constant is applied to the primary key or the primary column of the table, then definitely it will create impact in the model of the Power BI. The primary key foreign key relationship may break and thus one to many relationship will also break and hence the model will be affected. Now moving on to the next question. Fifth, that is if we are taking data from database, table has 6000 rows and table got truncated has only 1000 rows does power bi will have all the 6000 rows from the table so when we connect power bi to any table of a database at the time of loading whatever the actual number of records are present in the table of the database those will be picked up 
so at the time of picking up if it has 1000 rows it will load 1000 if it has 6000 it will load 6000 rows it so it depends on the current status of the number of rows in the table in database whatever is there it will be loaded in power bi now let's move on to the next question that is how will you identify the type of license looking at the workspace so to answer this question you should have knowledge of power bi service because if you have worked on power bi service by looking at the workspace name, you can actually tell the kind of license that it contains. For example, let me show you through a pic. I've already opened it. So you can see this is a app workspace and you can see these are all the workspaces present over here. But if you see, if I talk about this MSX insights PRD, you can see there is one icon over here that is diamond icon. So this diamond icon shows or tells that this workspace has premium license. If I talk about this particular workspace that is next based workload, so you can see this has some other symbol. It, is, it has a diamond as well as a person. So this is basically, this workspace contains premium per user license. So by looking at the icons, you can clearly tell the kind of license it has, whether it is premium license, whether it is premium per user license, or it's a normal workspace. So this, this is how you can answer the question in front of the interviewer. Now let's move on to the next question. The next question is, what is the size of workspace? So how can you say about the workspace size? It again depends on the kind of license that the workspace has. So if it is has, if the workspace is backed by premium license, then I can show you through a pic. So you can see it has, it supports model size up to 400 GB. So if the workspace has a premium license, model size up to 400 GB, we can store. If it has premium per user license, then it will have size up to 100 GB. So if you're working in Power BI service, you should have these kind of general information to answer this type of questions in the interview. I hope it is clear to you now. Now let's move on to the next question. What is unit testing in Power BI? Unit testing in Power BI is basically, unit testing, the word itself is, you have to test the report at the unit level, the, the lowest level with which you can test the report, whatever you have developed. So. Basically, at the row by row level, you have to test whether uh, the, your report contains the right data or not and it matches with the data that is coming from the source. For example, if the data is coming from SQL Server database, so every table which is being pulled in Power BI, you have to check the row by row data that is loaded in Power BI with the individual row that is present in database, which, which you can query using select statement, right? So row by row. Comparison will give the unit testing results in Power BI. Now the next question is, do how do you do the report validation? How do you do that? Report validation is basically uh, whatever functionalities you have implemented in Power BI, are they working properly or not? So you can validate that, is it working or not? Whatever KPIs you have built, whatever calculations, whatever measures you have cr created or calculated, are they coming right? that you have to validate using some sample size of data. For example, if you have a running total measure, so for, for two or three records, you can check individually, right? Manually, you can check whether the data, whether, whether the results are coming right or not. So where there you are validating whatever measures, KPIs you have built is coming right or not. So we can do that and hence the report validation succeeds if it all, if all goes fine. And now next question is, how will you cross verify the data which is coming from data source to report? I think this question he wants to ask, the interviewer wants to ask like whatever data is coming. So, you know, we create model in Power BI, right? When, uh, through one to many relationships. And finally, we display the data in, in a table, right? From multiple tables. So whatever data is being displayed, can we verify this we have in database or not? So we have to go to the database, do uh, write some select statement using some joins okay and take and fetch the query result okay fetch the query results export the data from the database similarly here also in power bi export the data from the table and match with some limited sets of records if it is matching that means you have cross verified and it is completely matching and hence the data shown is credible enough now the next question is did you do any kind of automation so automation to answer this question you should think about what kind of automation things are or what kind of automation functionalities are available in power bi basically in power bi service you have uh, subscriptions you have uh, alerts so those two things you can 
uh, tell to the interviewer about it whether you have implemented or not you can also talk about so you can see this is the uh, visual that is power automate for power bi so with the help of this visual also some kind of automations we like people usually do okay so we can so you can also give example of power automate in the automation part of this question okay if you have actually implemented it so in this way you can answer this automation part of the question then the next question is which is the last question what is dual mode you would have heard about import mode you would have heard about direct query mode you would have heard about live connection but what is dual mode so dual mode is basically when when a single table acts in the import mode for one table and at the same time the same table acts as a direct query for another table then in that particular table is acting as in dual mode okay because at the same time it is handling both the modes import mode as well as direct query connectivity and this is a kind of complex models or you would say these these comes into picture when we have we are, when we are going for a composite model okay so there these terms will be effective and there only you will practically implement these kind of modes so i hope you can answer this thing in front of the interviewer properly and it is clear to you now so all the questions that we have discussed they are quite practical questions and it can be easily asked in any of your power bi coming interviews so do share the video to all your friends and colleagues whoever are in need of this and thanks for watching the complete video